Okay guys, welcome once again to Happy Hour and Horsepower. Today we're going to talk about whether you need to upgrade the cylinder heads on your Turbo LS. As always, there are two sides of this. We're going to talk about both of them. But first, let's get to the Happy Hour portion of this. So what we do is take your favorite beverage. For me, this is a Mike's Hard Lemonade. But we're going to add a little something special. Before we can add that to this, we've got to make room. So now let's see if I can do this without spilling. Not my first rodeo. Okay, now <laughs> that's your favorite clear beverage, whatever that is. There's lots of good ones. Now it's a Mike's Hard Lemonade <laughs> with a purpose. Let's get to our discussion. Cheers. Ah, that's good stuff. Okay, here's the question. Do you need to upgrade the cylinder heads on a Turbo LS? Okay, we've got two sides, as always, to this discussion. First of all, on one side, we've got the ultra low buck, I'm not buying anything, guys. On the other side, we've got anything that you do to the NA motor to increase the power output means you increase the power output under boost. Guess what? Both sides, 100% true. But let's look at one at a time. And I also have a test for you coming up. So we've got on one side, do we need to change the cylinder heads? Do we need to upgrade them? Do we need to spend big money on a set of ported aftermarket heads when we already have a turbo combination? Well, here's my take on that. And, and it really it has more to do with the intended power output and the turbo selection than it does the cylinder head. Here's what I mean by that. If you have a typical junkyard 5.3 liter or 4.8 or 6.0 or 6.2, 7 liter, whatever it is, you have a typical LS motor. And this really applies to anything, a 5 liter Ford, big block Chevy, whatever it is. You have your motor and you wanna make a thousand horsepower. And so you get a thousand horsepower turbo, like this one from VS Racing, and that, that might be even more than that. But you get a thousand horsepower turbo. If your 5.3 or whatever size motor it is combination is canned and has springs and it's able to support that power level with that turbo, then obviously the answer is no. If you can make a thousand horsepower, if you can make all the power that that turbo will support with the combination you have, why would you upgrade the cylinder heads? It doesn't make any sense. As a matter of fact, cheers to that. And that's the argument on that side. I mean, why would they do that? Why would they spend the money? The argument on the other side, anything that we do to our combination, whether it's camshaft, and we see this all the time, obviously, if you run a stock 5.3 with a stock cam and add boost to it, you're not gonna make nearly as much power as if you add a camshaft. And I've done this test literally 50 or 60 times. So if we put a camshaft in a good, let's say a stage two cam, which I'm gonna be running this on the sloppy stage two versus the world with a bunch of other uh, stage two turbo cams, we're gonna run them NA and under boost and we're gonna do it with this turbo, which will be awesome. Thanks to the guys at VS Racing. Thanks Vic, Byron I mean. We're gonna do that. But if you, any, any change that you make to the motor, so if you put a camshaft in a stock 5.3 and then add a turbo to it, you're gonna pick up like 130 or 140 horsepower under boost. That's how good the camshaft is worth. Now we see the same thing, but to a lesser extent with a cylinder head change. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. I've got the, I've got the dyno results coming up. But if we upgrade the cylinder head and put a ported head, like in, in our test, we're gonna run a TrickFlow 205 head, which is a really good head, especially for that small bore motor, versus a stock head. And on this case, it's, it's on a 4.8 liter. If you upgrade the cylinder head and it makes more power NA, it's definitely gonna make more power under boost. And the nice thing about that, and the reason that you wanna do that, the same reason that you wanna do it with a camshaft, is it will allow you to make any power level that you want at a lower boost level. So for instance, if you have, uh, if you have a 5.3 liter and you run it with a stock cam and you run it under boost and it makes 600 horsepower, well, it might do that at 10 or 11 pounds. If you add a camshaft to it, it's probably gonna do it at five or six pounds. So you can reach that same level and obviously any sort of subsequent higher level much easier with a modified version of that motor than you can with a stock version. And the cylinder head is the same thing. 
So for guys wanting to make a given power level, if they modify the motor, including ported heads, which work, it's easier to do that with a modified version. <laughs> now which one do we pick? Because there's reasons to do both. But before we get to that, let's take a look at the power curves generated by our test motor. And we can talk a little bit more about that. This was a 4.8 liter LR4, and we installed a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 turbo cam in it. And we ran it with, uh, well, I take that back. We, we ended up putting the Stage 2 cam in it later on. This was actually with a stock cam, and we ran this motor with the stock LR4 heads, which is a 706 head, and also with the TrickFlow 205 heads. So we ran it at about seven pounds of boost. We had a single turbo with an intercooler on it, and all that worked very well. I'm gonna show you the run of a turbo motor, <laughs> just because I know you guys wanna see a turbo run. The reality is that that run, and we'll watch it right now, is not the turbo motor <laughs> that I ran the test on. I don't have that turbo motor, this was an older test. There was no video of that, but everybody wants to see the turbo motor run, so I'm gonna go ahead and let you do that. You know, plus I've been drinking, so you, you guys might wanna enjoy that. So we'll watch that thing run and make noise and do all the good stuff. But what we did was we ran it first with the stock head, same air fuel, same timing, same boost. Ran it with the stock head. Then we ran it with the TrickFlow 205 head. Same air fuel, same time, same boost. And here are the results. We picked up over 50 horsepower going to the TrickFlow head. So I, I think it shows from this test, and actually this would be a 4.8 liter would be the very last motor, if you were picking motors to do cylinder head upgrades on, a 4.8 liter would be absolutely the last motor that you would want to do an upgrade on. And the reason for that is it's a 4.8 liter, it's small. It has enough head flow. So the cylinder head, the 706 head, has a lot of flow for that small motor, much more than it would com compared, uh, respectively so, with a 5.3 or even a 6.0. So as you go up in displacement, that head flow doesn't look as impressive, but it's easy to support the power level on a 4.8 liter. So the 4.8 would be the last one that you'd want to upgrade. Because there were gains on the 4.8, that means there would be even greater gains on a 5.3 or a 6.0 or, or something even bigger than that. And guys that are running like serious combinations, they all have really good cylinder heads on them. So if you want to make lots and lots of power, you have to have good cylinder heads. Everything has to be good. The, the camshaft has to be right, the cylinder heads have to be right, the intake manifold has to be right. It all has to be designed to run at the operating range that you want, and you have to have the turbo size right, and all that stuff has to be great. But, we'll leave that alone for a minute. We know that the cylinder head adds power. It has to, it's, it's a really good ported head. That 205 head is the best head that you probably could get other than maybe a TEA ported or somebody else's ported 706 head because that's a good combination also. That's a good combination for that small bore motor. And it does make power, obviously, even on a 4.8, even with a stock cam, which would be, again, which would be the worst case scenario to add a ported head to, okay? So it's gonna be even greater gains on a 5.3 or a 6.0. We know that it adds power. That's not the question. The question is, should I pay for that? So over on this side, here are the guys, again, that have a turbo, have a stock 5.3 or a 4.8, have stock heads on it, and don't want to make, uh, don't want to spend the money on a cylinder head upgrade like that trickle head. Because let's face it, it's not, it's not a cheap date. It's a really good head. Like when you buy them and get them in the mail, you're like, these things are awesome. They're the kind of like cool thing, and I don't know how you guys are, but for me, when I get something like that shipped to me in the mail and I open it up, I'm like, man, this is really nice. I almost don't want to put that on the motor, it looks so nice. That's because all the rest of the stuff I'm dealing with from the wrecking yard, it's all greasy and grimy. It's got rat droppings all over it and hair and all kinds of crazy stuff. And these brand new shiny CNC stuff, they're all billety and you want to rub your fingers in there and it's all awesome. I almost don't want to put them on there because I don't want to ruin them. Especially I don't want to put them on a wrecking yard motor that I really don't care about, but I do care about the cylinder heads. But anyway, the guy that has the combination that doesn't want to upgrade the heads, he really doesn't need to because if he's got a turbo that's only gonna make that amount of power and he can make that power, it's nothing for him to think about. But what if he wants to make more? What if instead of one of these, what if he has two of those? And now he's trying to make a lot of power, like, you know, mid four digit level. Will cylinder heads come into play then? Absolutely. That's when things get easier. 
because again, then, then you're starting to transition from here, from this side where I'm not gonna pay for he cylinder heads over to this side where, hey, this is starting to look appealing because the more power that I make NA, the more power I'm gonna make turbocharged. And if I've got twins on it and it works really well, I can just add to this. So if I'm starting over here with 500 and I add 14.7 pounds of boost, I'm gonna be at 1,000. If I add <laughs> two bar of boost, 29.4 pounds, 14.7, yeah, 29.4, I'm gonna add 1,500 horsepower. So that multiplier effect is nice when you start out with more power. But guess what? There's a level that's in between these two. So, and here's what I want to talk about. And this is some testing I'm going to be doing later on. I already kind of started it with uh, my buddy, Brian Tooley, who, who has forgotten more about cylinder heads than I'll obviously ever know because I don't really do any head porting. This was, I take that back. I've, I've dabbled in a few times, but I'm by no means an expert at it. So if you guys are wanting like head flow videos or that kind of stuff or head porting videos, I'm probably not the guy. That being said, I'm going to do one anyway because <laughs> I'm crazy like that. Cheers. But the one that I'm gonna do is actually about unshrouding the valves in the combustion chamber. And we know that works because under Brian's supervision, I've already done the preliminary tests on it. I've unshrouded the valves on a 706 because we're putting it on a six liter head that's got a big bore, it's got a big gasket. When you unshroud the valves, we did pick up flow. So I'm assuming because of that, we're going to pick up power also. But that brings me to this middle ground portion between yes, it absolutely helps and, and no, I'm never gonna spend the money. You can, these guys can, if they want to get over here, but without spending the over here money, they can actually port their own heads or even modify them like I did. If you go in and if you unshroud the valve, actually even on a 5.3, even on that bore size, if you unshroud that valve, both the intake and the exhaust, you will pick up flow and you will pick up power. Now you can go subsequent steps up from that to make the head better. Cause one of the best heads I've tested are the, the stage two, ported heads from Total Engine Airflow, which Brian used to obviously take care of, they used to be involved and they used to own that. So those heads work really well. And those are full, full on CNC heads, CNC chambers, they have bigger valves, they have all the things done to them and they're done right. But there's a middle point. So you can take a stock head and do what I did to it. You can, you can unshroud the valves. You can also go in and do porting on a 706 head. If you do it right and you know what you're doing, you can also upgrade the valve. You can put the two inch intake valve in it. I don't know that I would change the exhaust valve, but you can go in and do the porting yourself and you could go in and do like, let's say even 85 or 90% of what a full on double throw down, wishbone alley cat, hush puppy shoe and crumb cake uh, porting job would do. You could do it yourself and get almost everything for very little money for basically just your time. So you can go in and blend the bowl, do the short turn. You could, the gasket matching thing is, a, in my opinion, is a myth. That's not usually where the flow restriction is. It's usually in other areas. So if you unshroud the valve and go in and do the bowl and do, do that, those areas and do a, a valve upgrade and make sure that you blend the seat to that bigger valve and do the things that you're supposed to do to make that head right, you can get from, I didn't do anything, not quite far all the way over to the best set of cylinder heads that you can get for that combination. You could be in the middle here. Maybe it's skewed more this way. Maybe it's skewed more this way. Whatever it is, depending on how good you're, you, you are at what you're doing. So that's my recommendation. There are guys that say, I'll, I, there's no way I'd spend the money on that. And they're absolute. And there are guys that say, there's no way I'd just run a stock head. Both of those guys, if they're absolute, are wrong. I mean, <laughs> I, I, and I respect that opinion if you want to do that. And if you want to do that, that's cool. But if you, own, if you think that that's the only way to do it, that's really not accurate because there are other ways. There's this way, there's this way, and there's all of these million different variations in between and all of them work. But again, this way, turbo, if you, if you have a 600, 700, 800, even a thousand horsepower turbo, you probably don't need to do the cylinder hits. If you're trying to get really, really big power and you're you know, trying to do 1,500 or 2,000 horsepower, yes, you're going to need that. It's that gray area in between that, that most of the questions come from. That's what guys ask me. Hey, I'm trying to make 
more than a thousand but less than pro mod power what do i need to do and i tell them almost invariably the i kind of lean toward this side do what you can to make the motor better then you look like a hero because like i said if you take a turbo and put it on a stock motor and you add 14.7 pounds of boost and you go from 350 horsepower let's say on a 5.3 to 700 horsepower that's okay you'll you'll like it it'll the the 700 will be a lot more a lot feel a lot better than the 350 but if you start at 400 or 450 which is really easy with the right camshaft on a 5.3 all of a sudden you're looking at 900 so how much better will 900 horsepower feel than 700 only you guys can answer that so which side of the coin are you on let me know in the comments are you i'm not going to change anything are you let's do, let's do everything that we can are you somewhere in the middle let me know guys make sure to like share subscribe ring the bell join with happy hour next time guys